Hi everybody, it's Lisa Campion here. Um, I wanted to talk today about psychic self-defense, mostly because somebody asked me um, recently what the sort of like basic psychic self-defense measures might be and what even psychic self-defense is. And I mean, I, I spent a lot of my time teaching psychic sensitives, empaths and healers, right? So I'm, I'm always really working with sensitive people. And psychic self-defense is like, how sensitive people um, protect themselves and um, very sensitive to other people's energy, you know, um, the ener not only other people's energy, but also the energy of places that you might go to, um, kind of just the ambient energy of the world that's around us. Sensitives are sensitive. So sometimes we are like kind of unduly influenced or more influenced than other people are by all of those things, right? So psychic self-defense is basically um, what we do to learn how to kind of protect ourselves, um, to be able to move through the world and deal with all kinds of people, be in different situations, deal with what I call contact negativity, which is just like the, the energy that you get when you're out and about in the world. I mean, of course, the world's not all negative. Like we are also, um, sensitive people are also really influenced by positive um, energy, but that's not generally the problem. We don't have a problem with that, right? We have a problem with how do we handle, um, you know, more maybe the, some of the more difficult energies that we encounter during the day. Um, and I, I think really when we deal with psychic self-defense, self it's quite simple. It comes down to the concept of boundaries. And boundaries are hard for us sensitive types, right? So. And there, there are really two ways to think about boundaries. Um, there's the energetic boundary um, that comes from holding our energy field in a particular way. And then there's sort of a kind of a deeper, more psychological boundary. And today I'm gonna to talk about the energetic boundary. I think tomorrow I'm gonna to talk about the psychological boundary. And the reason that I do that is because it's easier to learn the energetic boundary. Um, so we start with that. It kind of gives us a leg to stand on um, and it gives immediate results. Right, And because I'm an energy healer, I learned how to hold a stronger boundary first in my energy field. So we all have an energy field. Um, some people call it the aura. Um, we, you have one, we all have one. And if you can imagine that your energy field sort of has layers to it, it's about arms length out, and it's kind of like our, our vital life force energy, our, our ki or chi, if you will that extends beyond the confines of our physical body. And if you've ever played like hot hands and, and felt that energy, or if you do energy work, then you know what I'm talking about. And in fact, most people that are sensitive, psychic, empath, healer types have always been aware of this energy field that we have anyway. Um, and when you're dealing with talking about psychic self-defense, it's really the boundary layer that we're talking about. So that very, very outer edge of your energy field has a layer too. It's kind of like your skin holds in your guts and your body and your blood. This boundary layer of your energy field holds in your energy. Now the problem is that sensitives and empaths, psychics, have tend to have a very porous layer to their, this outer boundary layer, the outer skin of your aura, instead of being more solid, it's more porous like a sponge. And that's in fact why Empaths are called psychic sponges, right? Um, and anyone who has empathic tendencies knows what I'm talking about when I say that. So it means that you're sort of sucking up or absorbing all of this energy that's around you. Um, and a lot of times empaths will say, oh, I feel like I have no skin. I feel like a raw nerve in the world. I feel like I just absorb and pick up everything that's around me, right? The good thing is that our this outer or boundary layer to our energy field responds really well to doing visualizations, imagining, pretending, visualizing, impacts this part of our energy field considerably. So it's quite um, effective to strengthen the outer edge, outer, outer edge of your energy field by just imagining, by doing a visualization that it's something a little more solid. And when we're thinking about this outer edge to our energy field, we want to think about the quality of semi-permeability, like the membrane of a cell, rather than like a brick wall that keeps everything out. We don't want it to keep everything out. We want it to allow 
in only energy that's good, supportive, light, loving towards us. And we want to keep out energy that's not supportive to us. Um, and the most important thing about this outer edge of the field is that really nothing should be able to cross your boundary without your permission. And when you're an empath or sensitive, that's a really strange concept. That's a really um, foreign concept for a lot of us who who just don't have, we're not used to sort of having that, no, you can't, <laughs> thou shall not enter kind of experience with our energy fields. So <clears throat> there are lots of different ways to create a stronger energy field. Um, there's sort of daily meditations, and sometimes I post them here. Um, I'll probably post another one, I'll do another uh, little video of a guided meditation that I do to help strengthen the outer edge of your field. I'll do that pretty soon. Um, so there's lots of ways to do it. You can just imagine it, this, you can do a meditation, but I wanted to talk about an exercise today th that I think is kind of fun. Um, and I really do think that when we're working on this outer edge of the field or we're working on strengthening our energy system, we need to practice it on a regular basis. It's not something you can just do once and all of a sudden you're fine. It's like, like, wouldn't it be nice if like you could just go to the gym once and you're perfectly in shape? When we're dealing with our energy system, it's over time. Um, and the things that are positive and benefit our energy fields, it's are quite Kind of a, it's kind of a no-brainer. So things that are good for you like meditation, being outside in nature, exercise, resting, sleeping, eating good healthy food. When we, when we do these kinds of things, it tends to strengthen our, our energy field. Spiritual practice is very, very, very good for your energy field, by the way. Yoga, meditation, tai chi, um, the, these tend to strengthen our energy fields. And the uh, converse is also true. So things like stress, anxiety, depression, you know, thinking negative thoughts, being full of, you know, very self-critical, um, doing drugs, a lot of drugs and alcohol, living kind of a, you know, a hard life like that is also, t is weakens and breaks down the energy field too. So um, we can really strengthen it when we live kind of a clean life, but it needs to be done with consciousness and it needs to be done kind of every day. So if you have a meditation practice or a daily spiritual practice, adding a little bit in there to strengthen this outer edge of the field. You might imagine that it is like a, like a crystal ball or a castle wall or an eggshell or some some image like that and, and really concentrate on, like tell your this outer edge of your field to only let in energy that's supportive to you. It's very beneficial. There's kind of a fun exercise um, that you can do called the medicine wheel. And you need a piece of paper, and what you do is you draw a circle on the piece of paper. And I draw stick figures, because that's all I can do. I draw a little stick figure of myself, and I draw. And the circle represents your energy field, your boundary. And everything that you want to allow in, you can write on the inside of the circle. So the love of your family, or for your children, your pets, like positivity, love, money, abundance. Um, those can be in, and everything that's on the that you don't want to be in stays on the outside. You write it down on the outside of this shield, the outside of your little bubble on this piece of paper. Um, and if you do that, it's really interesting to see what you put on the outside and what you want to have come on the inside. And that will um, begin to create this boundary. That's really what I'm talking about. We need to be conscious of our boundary. We need to be conscious of our energetic boundary. And I find when I, I did a lot of this strengthening my energetic boundary by studying martial arts when I was younger. And it gave me really, it was great work for me to do as a psychic. It made me really grounded, really solid in my body. It was my first, I was really young when I did it, but it was my first experience with moving energy through my body in a conscious way that was very, a lot of talk of your, your key, your energy, and how we were doing that. Um, and, and and it's really good. Martial arts is really good for where your boundary is, you know? Um, so I, I recommend things like that can be quite beneficial. And I notice that when I hold an internal energy boundary very strongly, people tend to feel it, and they don't kind of mess with you, right? When you're, when you're able to bring your energy up with a kind of uh, um, internal energy, then it's sometimes even, you don't even have to 
work on the other psychological boundaries that we're going to talk about tomorrow, how we do that. And that's also something that empaths or sensitive people have to learn. We're going to get into that more tomorrow. So try the medicine wheel. Tomorrow, tune in. We're going to talk to more about the more difficult inner work you have to do when we're setting kind of a psychological boundary. But start with this outer boundary and see how you go with it. And I'll be posting a couple more uh, Facebook videos this week and give you a couple of guided meditations and other tips for psychic self-defense. So I'm out here this beautiful evening enjoying my garden and my, my rose garden behind me and um, I hope that you're also having a beautiful night. So thank you guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.